Oh, man. Hey, Donna. <clears throat> hey, Donna. I, it's not, it's not opening. Okay, sit down. Hello? Hello? Hi, Rich. Here we go. I got it. I guess we're the only two so far. Okay. We're we're in the uh, we're in the waiting room. Okay. I uh, I'm in my torn apart basement. Okay. I uh, started. I just I discovered some cold air blowing in, um, in the uh, along the you know the plate. Where the where the wall meets the foundation. Oh, so I started started clearing out some shelves and make some room to get up in there and do some uh, um, ceiling. Yeah, and the uh, uh, I discovered a couple other things that need to be taken care of. <laughs> yes, People, isn't that always the case? Some. Some people just shouldn't have tools in their hands. <laughs> Are you, uh, did, did you get much, you get a lot done around the house this year? No, not really, but my wife got a lot done. Yeah. I yeah, just, I, maintained getting most of the leaves up and that's about it. Yeah, that was that was pretty spread out. Hi Al. Hello. Hi guys. Al. Hi. How are you? Good. Our uh well we have five minutes. Okay. How's uh How's your work trip work trip going? Good. It's I'm in a, an interesting part of Connecticut. It's kind of the countryside. So I'm staying on a Christmas oh. tree farm, funny enough. It's a wow. house that was built around the time of the Revolutionary War. And it's an Airbnb. <clears throat> and it was the choice of this or comfort in. <laughs> so I said, oh, I see a piece of history. <laughs> right. Yes. So so it's a really it's a really neat house. Cool. Yeah. I was just telling Rich, I'm I'm having a um, the joys of owning a 120 year old house adventure this week. <laughs> One of those weeks. Yeah. Didn't uh, you know? Started started Monday off with uh, with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> Um, That's the beauty of having a historic home. Yeah, it's uh, mm, the love. Well, yeah, it's exactly what it is. Paul Kreider explained that to me when I first moved into the neighborhood. He's like, "You got to treat it like a love fest or move." <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Um, what size of it? Yeah, I I ran into uh, a wiring issue where uh, someone should have never had tools in their hands. Uh, oh, one of those. Um, and I know what I'm doing in it and I know what to look for. <clears throat> and I know bad work and I know horrible work. <laughs> and I found horrible work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we've all had a house that we found something that you went, I don't know who was thinking this was a good idea. <laughs> Right. How? When was your? Uh, when was your house on Monroe built? Was that the twenties, right? Yeah, it was like around twenty-eight or twenty-nine. Yeah, and, and how old's this one? I think it was built in the fifties. 
the early 50s, if I remember correctly. Okay, we have uh, Julian. How are you? Yeah, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Good. How's it going, Julian? Not bad, sir. How are you? Good. And Matt has joined us. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh now man. I know who you are. I've seen yeah. I've seen you around before. Yeah, right. Good to I see live you. right around the corner from you. So yeah. Right. 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 Cool. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, you too. Um, we'll wait a couple minutes here still. It's okay. not quite six. Well, I've got Nick tuning in. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Nick. How's it going, Nick? <laughs> Hi, Nick. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Not bad. Um, I think this may be, I know Jim Lyon isn't coming and oh, the, um, the other new member, um, how do you pronounce Jing. his name, Al? Jing. Was Jing? Jing. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jinga. Jinga? Yeah, he's not on. Oh. Okay. Oh. I guess we can wait a couple minutes. This is going to be short and sweet. Yeah, um, yeah. Just basically hey, updates. Dan, Dan? Yes. Yeah, I, I printed out the agenda and the minutes to distribute them. I dropped them off at Doug's house this morning and told him, you know, Doug does not have, I don't think Doug has a smartphone or a PC or a tablet. Um, uh, I, I think his, his girlfriend might have one. I don't know, but I, I'd be doubtful if uh, Doug Richardson joins us tonight. Okay, was, was Doug appointed, Al? I don't, weren't we full? And then when Judy came back that we were full. Right. We we oh, didn't okay. More spots. So spots. that's, uh, that's on the agenda. That's on the agenda. Well, we can cover that under old business, I suppose. But I did put it in the minutes of uh, the last meeting because we, we have to tidy that up because Noel and Mark both unofficially resigned. and um, But that needs to be made official. And from what I understand, they have to at least send a, a, a letter or an email. I, I don't know but that was never really made official. I think we didn't okay. reappoint them because of the, they didn't ask to be. But you're saying they got reappointed? I believe so. I don't know, you know, it's... That's I haven't okay. gone into Village Hall to check on any of this stuff, so. <laughs> I, I just got a letter. Um, last week asking me to resign from the Glen Park board. So oh. I guess I will be resigning from that, but well, staying with the tree board. I mean, that's only if you want to. Right. Uh, yeah. That was yeah. a shocker, Rich. <laughs> um, well, we, we may as well get going. Uh, I don't want to hold anybody up any longer. Um, so I will call the, the meeting to order and it is it's oh, three. Um, we'll start off by, um, welcoming our, our new member, Matt, right? Matt Carson. Yeah. And, um, and Matt, oh. you're, you, you said you live around the corner from me and, and what? Yeah, I live in Elk Grove. Um, I'm okay, so you're, the you're siding done. Oh, so you're you're between uh, Nick and I actually. Right, right in the middle. Right. right. Um. Okay. Well, great. Welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for signing up. Yeah. Thanks for having me. 
it's a it's a very um, dedicated and um, pretty efficient board. Um, we've we've uh, we've come a long way in the last decade, where we've you know we worked it from um, being you know basically hard laborers. Um, and planting uh, bare root trees and getting volunteers and, and doing it that way too. Um, as time went on, we just discovered that it was a much better situation to um, plant bald and burlap trees. And we hardly have any loss now and the DPW does it. So it's, it's basically transformed from a, a, a laboring group to watchdog slash planning um and and that's pretty much a full-time job when it comes to being on a committee you know it it, it uh it uh you know when it comes to the time you're going to put into a committee um that takes that takes up the time um there's there's a lot of trees in this village and and um and as we find out every year there's all the more work to do it never ends so um so welcome um i'm going to motion to approve the minutes from october 5th second second by was that julian yes indeed yep all in favor Aye. Aye. Excellent. Um, so that puts us at the, that qualifies us for the uh, Tree City USA right there. We had a meeting in February, a meeting in March, um, a meeting in September, and a meeting in October. And they require, they require four, uh, four meetings. So essentially we have five, but the December one's always the leftover one for the year so that's good um the uh update of the fall planting um i talked to ben at about 4 30 today um they have about half of them in um the delivery is still making its way in um you know with this pandemic the uh um, everything is, is, uh, you know, <clears throat> slowed down and, um, everybody's doing a great job, but everything slow. And, um, luckily we have the bonus of this, uh, this good weather. So the trees are still going in. Yes. Um, if anybody wants to take a ride down, um, Farber, uh, they did a great job on Farber, uh, on, on the uh, east side, the school side, they replaced all those small trees. And then further down, they finished off those, um, the, uh, the sycamores that were planted and a couple crashed. Those are some of the first trees I, I planted. I know that was one of the first years I was on the board. Um, so it's, it's nice to see that street pretty much done now. Um, there were a couple removals on that street uh, over the last couple of years. So we'll have to tweak that a bit because this far, that part of the list for Farber was pretty much left over from uh, the planting list. I should say was pretty much left over from the past, past two planting. So um, we'll have to get a couple in for them in the, in the spring planting. I've, I've made a note of it. So. Hey, Dan. Uh, yes. Dan? Uh, I received an e email from a homeowner on uh, uh, Highland, you know, Patrick Kelly, who we went and looked at the tree that they removed a couple weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. And he said he heard he was getting a tree planted maybe this week or so. Um, I know that they've ground stumps here on Oak Grove at three addresses that they removed last week. But if, if they're grinding strunk, <coughs> excuse me, stumps this week, we're probably not going to plan at those addresses until the spring or sometime next year, correct? Right. That's, that's been their, yeah, our, our normal, normal protocol. 
that that's what I told Patrick, and I think he was confused by some of the the language on the flags inserted inserted there. So I'll I'll circle back with him and and tell him he's not going to see a tree until next year. Okay, and those those flags were were for the um, stump grinding. That's what I thought. That's what I right. told him. Uh, okay, they, very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, we. I mean. It's always a crapshoot there, right? It all it all depends on how rotted the stump is, but that was a right. pretty big tree. So, um, so they're they're about halfway done. If anybody wants to see the the trees that are going in, they're in the side yard, uh, or behind uh, South Long Park. Yeah, uh, and uh, they have them stored there under uh, mulch, and uh, so they've bedded them correctly. We've done that before. Yeah, I, I saw them a couple of weeks ago. They all look like they're doing well. Yeah, yeah. And um, again, um, Chestnut Ridge won the bid um, because the bid, actually we put the bid bids out on October 6th and um, Chestnut Ridge came back with the cheapest. And uh, I believe Ben ordered a couple extra ones because there was a, there were two sites on Main Street. One I know was in front of the B, and um, there's another one further down near uh, St. Peter and Paul, I believe. Um, so he, he's, you know, obviously he, he's got his eye on Main Street, and um, he, he let me know about it. The money's in the budget, you know, so it was two extra trees. Okay. Um, uh, any other questions about the fall planting? No, sir. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, the uh, the tree removals. Um, I don't remember if I knew it was. It's AJ's. Uh, as I put in the minutes, it was AJ's uh, tree service that we uh, they subcontracted uh, for Amherst, and we and uh, Ben piggybacked on that on that uh, contract so we are getting a better deal per removal than we were with right frontier now um, what the exact cost is i don't know um and al the uh i did have a question um the uh that line um is almost gone and they did a lot of work and that's that's fine. I mean, we've we've done our allotment for the year, and, and if that's what we could done this year, that's that's all good. Um, but I was wondering, do, do you know if that was that encumbered from last year, or did we start fresh on that line? Um, that's a question I have, and if you don't have an answer for that now, I, that's fine. But Al. Guys, Al? Look, he's muted. Yeah, I was muted. Sorry. Hi. I don't think we encumbered it over, but I don't. I'm not 100 percent certain. I'd have to yeah. check. Yeah, because we usually did, because it was always the the tree. The tree season is kind of opposite or offset from the budget season, you know, kind of from the you know like the 10,000 trees schedule and and just the it, it always just seems to start in the fall. So that's that's how and with removals, right? Um, they start you know, mid year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if we could, if we could make sure that happens, that's always been the case. I mean, it's, it's money that was already budgeted for it. And, uh, you know, that, that uh, I don't want to run into a situation where we desperately need it and it got bounced out where it was there. And then, you know, all that's going to happen then is, is, uh, We'll just have to ask for more money. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so you're saying you, uh, we encumbered it over and added it to our, our current fiscal year budget? Oh, okay. Typically did? Yeah, that's usually, the, that was usually the case. I wasn't sure. I, I, <clears throat> I wasn't able to keep up on the budget this year. So, yeah. Um, and I apologize for that. But, no, that's um, okay. Um, so, uh they removed about a dozen this year and um matt and nick that it seemed like our neighborhood got annihilated but it 
we were just first. Um, there were those issues on your street um, that had to be taken care of. And, and then the, the one tree in front of Paul Kreider's house actually had a crack about seven feet up the trunk. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was starting to split. It was starting to separate. And, it, and then it toward the street, luckily. And it was actually mushrooming on the other side. Typical case of on? what's that? What street is that on? That's on. Um, it's on the trees on Park, but it, the address is um, South Ellicott. It's right on the corner of South Ellicott and Park. Right by the park. Okay, cool. Um, there's you know the stump there now, but it it uh, it had been the sidewalk was lifting a bit, and we spot he spotted it last year. Let me know about it, and. Um, and then we we looked at it closer this year, and it was like, oh, okay, that. And it was already white. Whenever you see a now, Matt, whenever you see a white dot on the tree, that's slated for removal. And what we what we what happened from we're still dealing with residual damage from from the uh, October storm um, with the maples, and this is something that's happened regionally. Um, when I was in office, I was able to compare some notes with other municipalities about, um, you know, what was going on with their silver maples. And there's one of two things. They were starting to hit the, the post-war plantings were starting to hit their, their lifespan for, for street trees. And the October storm caused just enough damage where these trees were broken up inside enough where there wasn't enough foliage to to carry all the water to and then the water sits in the tree and dry rots it and it's and it wasn't just you know it was a regional problem and it, and every single silver maple that we've taken down that was suspect has you know in some cases that it, it's two-thirds rot and and including the one in front of paul Kreider's house it was it was you know the, the trunk was, you know, the trunk is this big around and the rot is this much. So, um, so in World War II, those were planted after World War II and then they're kind of hitting their lifespan now? Yeah, the, any, I mean, we first started noticing it in the, um, in the northern section of the village down below the escarpment because that's all post-war. And we took a lot down. Those were the first ones to come down in a big chunk. And then any of the other ones that were about the same size, they're con- they're just following suit. So, um, but you know, we've we've planted a lot of trees in the last 10, 12 years, and and you know they're all starting to catch up. Um, you know, they're you can't plant a fifty year old tree, but you know, we have good sized ones and have been for you know a decade now. So. Um, so that that's about. I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, I thought someone said something. Okay. Um. The uh, the ten thousand trees and growing list. We didn't. Um, the two plantings before this one. Um. We didn't put any trees in that we hadn't already got credit for the site. And Matt, let me back up. The 10,000 Trees and Growing Program is a program that the um, na- that National Grid offers. And if you plant trees under utility lines that fit their criteria, um, they credit you with uh, $50 per tree. And over the years, we've taken quite a, quite a bit of money from them on this. And um, but the last two plantings before mid-year this year, we hadn't done any that weren't already uh, given, we, that we weren't giving credit for. In the northern part of the village, like we, a lot of the bare root stuff that we planted hung on for a bit. And then, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just didn't work. Um, so when we replace those trees that we already got paid for, we don't get the, the fifty dollars then again. Um, their main garrison 
was a supplemental planting essentially and um so we're gonna we're gonna roll that into the 10,003 growing program the list for next year um on top of the ones we're planting now and actually in the spring um the this upcoming spring so the uh um there are 12 trees there, so it's, you know, that's worth $600 for us. So, on top of everything else we're doing. So that's, any other questions about removals? How much does it cost to take a tree down typically? I know it's probably all over the board, but. Uh, I'm gonna say, it, it, we used to get from Right Frontier, it was it was kind of a, a crapshoot. They would they would charge us like anywhere from twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a day. Sometimes that would be two trees. Sometimes that would be four. Um, but I'm not sure of the what they're costing us per now. But we're doing per tree, which is really the way it, it should be done. And I'm sure that you know. And and we're our DPW takes down the ones they can handle. They pass off the uh, the bigger ones that are either in lines, in power lines, or just too big um, to handle. And we've upped our game. We we uh, worked for quite a while to get ourselves a, a a bucket truck for the village. So now we have a bucket truck that uh, that they can they can go a little higher with. But they still don't get into power lines, and we don't want them to. That uh, and that so that's for the subcontract. Um, so I, yeah, um, I'll get the cost on that. Al, you don't happen to know what that's costing us per tree, do you? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I muted. Um, no, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. I don't have the, the finances in front yeah, of me. Yeah, I'm, I, I failed to ask Ben today. Um, sorry about that. Um, but I know it's a better deal than we had going before. And it's definitely a more, more dependable service. Um, when we had a couple of, uh, you know, emergency takedowns, like how they started off over here, they they did it. So, um, and Right Frontier was good with that too, but sometimes we had to wait. Um, and that's 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 not good. Um, and they're they're I guess they're a smaller company too, but uh, they, and they they did great work for us. They essentially, you know, essentially got outbid. That's that's the joys of being a village of a big town. We get to we get to piggyback. Um, the uh, number six, the membership. We sort of we sort of talked about that before the meeting started, right? Um, uh, Al, can you check into that for me and maybe shoot an email if? If we are, if we're full, that's fine. Um, that's what I was going to look up and see if I can find the message from Judy. Yeah, I know, but I, I took that mess when I saw that. I, I, I was under the impression that they were considering Matt or Matt, not Matt, sorry, um, Mark and Noel still on the on the committee. Um, yeah, that's what I told her. And that's why I was trying to figure out, I don't remember how we left it because it's been a <coughs> month and a half, so, two months now. <clears throat> so if that is, if, if, if they still are. Yeah. Officially, we just have to ask them to, I, I, I guess I, I always took it as it had to be a letter, but I suppose it could be an email, uh, especially yeah. now, you know, during this. So, uh, because uh, like we, in the, in the minutes, uh, Doug Richardson, who would be a, a great addition because he is probably the ultimate eyes on the street. And, um, and Elizabeth D'Agostino who lives outside of the village, but we are allowed to do that just as long as it, it doesn't turn into two, three members. Right. Um, Mark Lepadlo was on, yeah, he, he was on the tree board for longer than me and um he he lived outside the village um 
but yeah, Elizabeth <clears throat> is uh, she's basically coordinating the uh, Amherst Green Initiative program, and uh, as we talked about in the in the uh, prior meeting, I forget which one it was that how you know, that would be a nice tie. -in. Yeah, because the website still shows both Mark and Noel on there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they'll have to. They'll have, however, it has to happen. They'll they'll need to uh, resign officially. Yeah. And then and then uh, like in the, it like in the minutes of the last meeting, we talked about you know the tree boards, rec, you know asking for. Uh, Doug and Elizabeth to be appointed. Right. Or recommending. So I've got it back on here that Mark can remove. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions on uh, up to now? Nope. Um, anyone have any new business? No. no. Nope. Um, any, hey, uh, any old Dan? business? Uh, what's that? Uh, just one thing. This uh, 2021, this will be a year that we're going to be uh, inoculating the ash trees again, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so that means our um our annual drive around we take the right. list um the list of what we have left okay um i'll make a note of that to uh, i'll talk to ben um and get that list do i do don't know of, i'm sorry what do you do anything to the elm trees the elms no, the uh, well, the elms that we plant now, the uh, all the American elms have been long gone. Um, the elm trees that we plant now are are um, much elm disease resistant. Um, we plant um, lace bark and uh, and accolades too, right, Dan? Yes. Uh, okay. I actually have an elm in my backyard, believe it or not. Oh, do What's you? That? Massive. I have a massive elm in my backyard. Is it an American elm? Yeah, I'm almost positive it is. It's huge. And I, I guess they, they took care of it a couple of years ago and the guy that did it like hugged the tree. You couldn't believe it was alive. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's a great you, story. Yeah, you, stop uh, over and see it. You you might be the only one in the western New York for all we know. <laughs> and it's it's like I ran my line, so it might be my neighbors, but who knows, right? Yeah. Well, maybe that's why they took care of it so so well. <laughs> Nobody wanted that bill. <laughs> um, because the uh, well, if the if the tree guy said that it was uh, an American elm, I'd have to I'd have to believe him. Because some of them um, mimic them, I believe it's the accolade that uh, that looks looks a lot like it. Yeah, it's probably um, hard to tell these days, right, with the, the leaves off. But stop over sometime and check it out. Sure. Yeah, um, I've probably seen it and not and not known. Um, wow, excellent. Well, it's in the you know it's in the backyard, so it's it's not like you can see it from the street or anything, but. Um, well, if it's big enough, I may even be able to see it from my backyard. Yeah. Like you, like you can see my pine tree probably. <laughs> Sorry about if any uh, pine cones blow your way. <laughs> <laughs> or pine needles, boy, I've never seen pine needles go so far that in this last windstorm, no. I found them halfway down my driveway. Um, the uh. Okay, so I will get that list from Ben. I don't know if, if we've removed any um, ash. The only ones that were talked about were those ones that national or the uh, utility companies was talking about removing on Willowbrook. And um, that kind of went away with the whole outbreak of the pandemic. So um, they marked them and that's as far as it went. They never got taken out. So uh, 
apparently they're on uh, utility company pays. Um, I will get that list from Ben and good question, Nick. Um, you know what that means? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll, um, you know, we, we have to wait until they start to leaf out. Right. Right. Um, the, uh, early spring is a good time, good indication time because you can see where the tree is starting to leaf out and where it's struggling to leaf out. Um, and then, uh, you know, by the time we assemble the list and I'm a double check, um, sometimes our, our assessments are, are, uh, verified and sometimes they, they fill in and they're fine. Um, and Matt, anything that we, any, anything that's in doubt, um, Tom Draves is, is our arborist and, um, between him and, um, Ben Villanen, who is the um, DPW chief, he's he's also a, a, a licensed landscape architect, so he can he can spot issues that not the the average person can't. Um, so between those two, we we haven't missed much, um, and we usually have to call Tom in, but he's always really good about being there for us. So. Um, Okay, any other new business? Not that I can think of. Any old business? I, uh, just to touch base on the minutes from the last time, I did not, uh, I did not talk to Ben about the um, updating the survey. It's one of the things I forgot to bring up, but like we talked about in the, and it's in the minutes, that's, that's most likely a post pandemic project anyway. Um, you know, that's, it's not like we're not, it's not like we're not keeping record of what's going on. It'll just be a little bit more work to do when we do update it. But, you know, um, there's no reason for, you know, two people that don't work together, or however many people that don't work together every day to be sitting next to each other to update a tree survey during a pandemic. That's mm -hmm. so. Um, okay, well, um, if nobody has anything else, um, we can schedule the next meeting. Um, when is, uh, hang on, sorry. Does January 4th work for everybody or is that too close to the holidays or? Good for me. It works for me. Is everybody good at that? Of course they're good. I can do it. Are they yeah. always at six o'clock? Are you, are you talking well, about again, having a, a Zoom meeting? Yes. Because that's a lot easier. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're right. These are official by executive order. Uh, no, we should, uh, good, good point, Matt. We should bring these back to six 30. Um, we were scheduling them at six through the summer or the, the late fall because we were doing them outside and just to guarantee we had daylight. And, uh, uh, when Keaton scheduled the zoom meeting, he just went off the prior to the two prior meetings and made it six o'clock. So that was, that was a slip up on my part. I should have caught that. So I apologize. Um, so six thirty the fourth then, right? Yeah. Six 30 on January 4th. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if no one else has anything else, uh, thank you gentlemen. Um, and we're back on track for the, uh, tree city USA. And uh, I will uh, motion to adjourn. I second the motion and everybody be safe, okay? Yes. Okay. And happy holidays. Be well. And uh, thank you all. Yeah, Great. Thanks, 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 Dan. Thanks. Thanks. Catch happy you guys holidays. later. Thank you. Bye.
exploring several options to boost the smartphone verification system for vaccination status and negative tests. The Australian government has also said it may require proof of vaccination in the future for entry into the country. A glimpse into a vaccinated future and a new normal. Jolene Pence, NBC News, Los Angeles. The COVID crisis again impacting someone close to the president and lawyer Rudy Giuliani remains hospitalized with the virus. Here's Hallie Jackson. Another hurdle for the president's legal team, but this one's not in court. Rudy Giuliani now in the hospital after President Trump's personal attorney tested positive for COVID. Rudy's doing well. I just hope you know he's doing very well. No temperature. The former New York City mayor has visited key states, appearing with no mask, to convince lawmakers of widespread election fraud, which doesn't exist. Now, out of caution, the Michigan State House will shut down tomorrow, Arizona closing its chambers all week. The Trump campaign says Giuliani tested negative before traveling, insisting its legal fight, which is failing, will go on. But in another blow, Georgia's GOP leaders are shutting down the president's pressure campaign to follow a special session aimed at overturning Joe Biden's victory there. Biden's win recertified today in Georgia after a recount, with a top Republican there dismissing the campaign's baseless claims of widespread fraud. Actual evidence, the facts, tells a different story. Back in Washington, NBC News has learned Attorney General Bill Barr is thinking of leaving before an operation day, according to sources familiar with his thinking. Those people say Barr was considering this even before the president became upset last week when the AG said he's found no evidence of systemic fraud that would have affected the election's outcome. The Justice Department is not commenting. Justice. All right, Howie, thank you. In Ohio, growing up, weeks after a deputy shot and killed a young black man, the circumstances still are clear. Here's Dave Gutierrez. My grandfather is that dog. Relatives say 23 year old Casey Goodson reported someone sandwiches, not a gun, and he was fatally shot by a sheriff's deputy Friday in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, Russians want to target you. I was in charge, or, or I want myself off, was in charge of overseeing our efforts against that. 
They could say migraines four children per child in the last year at age 50. In many cases, like Mark's, have hit other CIA offices around the world in the last 18 months. And the CIA has tracked Russian agents in the same cities at the same time, according to a source with direct knowledge. There's no conclusive evidence. That's true. All right, Andrew Mitchell tonight, thanks. In just 60 seconds, the new alert about a scam targeting Amazon and Apple customers. How to protect yourself. These are real people, not actors. We've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixin. Dupixin is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixin is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixin saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. We're going to tell you about a new alert on a scam targeting Amazon Prime and Apple customers. With more on that, here's Tom Costello. The warning from the Federal Trade Commission tonight, beware of robocall scams suggesting that your Apple iCloud account has been hacked or trying to trace a suspect Amazon purchase. Amazon Dallas purchase of $331 taken away from your Amazon account. Trust fund to connect to our customer support team. Scammers told retired police sergeant Ron Cole he had an $800 charge. What did you think? What was your first thought? It just seemed a little bit legitimate at first because of the way they uh, presented it and everything like that. But he quickly realized it was a scam and hung up. But scammers sent this fake Amazon email to Wanda Lee with a $6,000 charge. She called to give them a piece of her mind. Well, you know what I thought of this game you just said? Scamming people and this time of year with the pandemic going on, people need to take care of and the last thing you have on me. The advice from the FTC don't press one to speak to a live person. Don't call any number or local call provides. Don't give out personal information. The FTC, Amazon, and Apple say if you suspect a problem with your account, call them directly on a number you know is legit. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Up next, the power of music, Bob Dylan's Mega Deal. I'm a Verizon engineer, part of the team that built 5G front. We started with America's most reliable network, added 5G nationwide for millions of Americans, and the unprecedented performance of ultra wideband in more and more places where people need massive capacity and ultra low battery. I'm proud ultra wideband was named the fastest 5G in the world, but I'm even more proud all that work is going to make a real difference for you. This is the 5G America is waiting for, only from Verizon. Safe to go really fast. Papa sells a plus power match gels with 25% more concentrated power. Oh, what a relief it is. So fast. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balance and attrition to their strength and energy. Great tasty and strong. Nine grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and it's hits to support and heal health. <laughs> Americans who drive our trucks and ambulances who put fear aside and run toward the flames. These are the people we depend on. That's why at the Ford Motor Company, our super duties have undergone 20 million miles of testing so that these people can depend on us. I'm Laura. I'm Saz. How long have you been we do consulting, but we also write. We take care of ourselves constantly. It's important. We walk three to five times a week, a couple miles at a time. We've both been taking prevention for a little more than 11 years now. After about 30 days of taking it, we noticed clarity that we didn't notice before. It's still helping me. I still notice the difference. Prevention. Healthier brain. Better life. 
she ran in the holiday season last night for the CBS special, A Holly Dolly Christmas. The movie Clear Cover Girl is also giving fans a look inside her personal library. <laughs> And tomorrow, Maria Clear will host E.T.'s own Michelle Turner to join their Instagram Live series, Getting Down to Business. Oh, I love that show. For Bernie and Shirley fans, the co-stars are remembering actor Dave Lander, who played the lady's zany neighbor Squeaky on the classic sitcom. The 73-year-old passed away Friday due to complications from multiple sclerosis.
only means the fun of new technology during the holidays. And nothing has more fun technology than a new Hyundai. Magical features like available fine slot view monitor and wireless device charging. And with the savings of Hyundai holidays, now you can get one for yourself. Hyundai holidays, a laundry look, corners to life. Get 0% APR for 72 months, plus three years complimentary maintenance on the Tucson. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Hey Alexa. Yes? Play that radio. Of course. you guys. 